Oh, hello. The snow goggles on, you know, a mystery novel. Crater, a bomb crater there. Holy shit, there's a bobcat. Ah, I hate to say that. Normally they go out and up. I screwed up the settings here. This water walking, my 400 millimeter lens decided to um, have an issue. What's the sharpest thing in the photo? It's that tooth. This one, the symmetry and the just kind of the quirkiness of the composition here. Super nice. Thank you, David. You're the man. Throws it up in the air and catches it and swallows it. Uh, what a scene. I would have done that differently if I could do it again. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Mathis. I'm here for my annual favorite of the year video. Let's call this the top 23 images of 2023. And when I say top, I don't necessarily mean best. I mean my favorites. So some of these might be like, you know, nice photos, but extra special to me because of the the way I made them or the experience that I had while making them or just because I'm quirky and I like quirky things sometimes. So um, top 23 for me does not mean my best. It means my favorite and favorites, of course, are subjective. So uh, we'll jump right in and start with the first one here. Uh, this is it's a pretty standard portrait of a bison bull in Yellowstone. Um, I mean, standard is kind of doesn't do it justice, but it's a beautiful portrait. I love it uh, of a big bull bison covered in snow with the, the snow goggles on. You know, he looks awesome. And, um, you know, nothing tricky here. Just a beautiful situation and a nice photo of that beautiful situation. So uh, this was shot on the Nikon Z9 with the 400 millimeter 2.8 lens. I had stopped this down to f5.6 to get a little more depth of field so that uh, his fur and the snow on his body is uh, also nice and sharp, besides just his head and face. Uh, so I expose this so that the snow and everything is very nice and bright white. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a beautiful picture. So this one was at ISO 500, f5.6, and 1 1,000th of a second shutter speed and a good way to start off the year in Yellowstone in winter. Um, let's go to image number two of my favorites. This one's got a little bit more going on, a little more of a, a storytelling situation here. Um, maybe even less, less of a storytelling situation as more of a, like a mystery novel type situation here. So if you look at this image, it's a, uh, it's a mule deer with a bobcat eating the mule deer, uh, which does happen in nature. Bobcats can take down mule deer, but it's, it doesn't happen very often. But this has got even more going on. If you look up in the snow, there's a big like crater, a bomb crater there. And it, outside of the frame here, there's a huge cliff up above this little snow field. And when we were on the snow coach, we came around the corner and we could see something, an animal, in the snow field below this huge cliff. And we stopped the snow coach and I got binoculars on it and I went, it's a mule deer. And then I went, holy shit, there's a bobcat on the mule deer. And so then we drove in closer and got to watch this scene unfold. But uh, there were only a couple other cars, uh, snow coaches, that had gotten there in front of us to see this scene. Um, and it was incredible to see, uh, you know, trying to piece it together what happened there. Either the deer had fallen off the cliff or the bobcat had chased it off the cliff and maybe even ridden it all the way down and survived the fall. Maybe a mountain lion chased it off the cliff and then the bobcat just found it. Maybe the deer just slipped off the cliff and then the bobcat found it. Nobody knows. And so it's a mystery, but trying to piece that mystery together is kind of fun. But at any rate, it's very obvious that the deer had fallen, made this huge crater, tumbled down the snow a little bit, and then the bobcat is sitting there eating it. And it had just kind of gotten started on its throat there. 
Uh, there's a little bit of blood on the snow, but uh, other than that, it, it was just a really amazing <laughs> thing to, to witness. Uh, just this scene, uh, watching the whole thing unfold would have been incredible. But to my knowledge, nobody saw what happened there. Uh, so anyway, I shot this this way. This is at 400 millimeters with the 402.8. I also shot it at 800 millimeters with the 2X teleconverter on it and got nice in uh, portrait on the Bobcat while he was feeding on the carcass. But this, to me, was the better photo to shoot it wider and as a vertical to show like the bomb crater and the you know the patterns in the snow to see where the deer fell down and and then you get to see the bobcat actually eating the deer. So this to me was the way I preferred to um, present this image, this story of what's happening here versus just the tied up. And those were cool too, and I took those as well. But this was my favorite version of that. So as I mentioned, this was with the 402.8 at 400 millimeters. This is one one hundredth of a second f5.6 ISO 500. So I didn't need much shutter speed here. One one hundredth of a second is fine um, when nothing's moving in the scene. So that's no problem to handhold that and um, or shoot it off of a tripod or whatever. Get a nice tack sharp image there, and this one is. So, super interesting image here. Uh, yeah, just, it's crazy to think about what that was all about and uh, just wonderful. So, uh, let's go on to image number three. We're still in Yellowstone in the winter. And this is another bull bison. This one, obviously, just caked in snow. Beautiful snowstorm going on. It was dumping out there. It was piling up on them. Uh, and this particular big bull, big old bull, has kind of non-typical horns. Like the, you know, his horns go down and out instead of normally they go out and up. So he he's an interesting looking bull to begin with. But then you put him just buried in snow, with the snow still falling, and then we've got a really cool portrait opportunity. So that was uh, interesting, super super cool photo. Now this is one where I. I screwed up the settings here. In hindsight, I, I shot this on the 400 millimeter f2.8, and I shot it at f2.8, ISO 500, 1 12 50th of a second. And I had enough light that I could have stopped this down to say f5.6 or f8. And some of the snow that's caked onto his body is getting a little soft. It's out of the depth of field at that f2.8. So in hindsight, I should have shot that with more depth of field. It's still, to me, a very beautiful and compelling portrait, but uh, I would have done that differently if I could do it again. Uh, anyway, cool bull bison in Yellowstone in winter. And now we're off in uh, late January to Kenya. And this is in Amboseli. There was a severe drought last year in Amboseli, and uh, we happened to see a couple of giraffes walking out across the dusty plains out there looking for food and just wandering. And they were out just on the plains, nothing around, and then there was this one big acacia tree that we kind of, we set up and hoped that uh, these two giraffes would walk over to this tree. Just because there was nothing else for them to really walk to, they were just walking through the dusty plains out there in the middle of nowhere. So we we took the safari vehicle and we set up at this tree and got everything framed up, selected our lenses, the focal length, and set it up as if the giraffe would walk into the frame. And we just waited for that particular shot to come to us. Uh, and sometimes those happen and sometimes they don't. And this time the, uh, the giraffe cooperated and we got exactly what we set up for and exactly what we wanted, and it turned out just beautiful. Uh, that's a big animal, that giraffe, and you look how it's just been dwarfed by this huge old acacia tree out in the middle of nowhere. So I love the, the big giant animal that looks small because of the, uh, uh, the scale of um, the, the size of that tree. It's really cool. So I dig this one. I did a black and white conversion on it, and I, th I love the way it turned out with the black and white. Um, 
So anyway, just a, a lovely photo that I really dig out there in Amboseli. Um, this was shot with the Z9 and the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, one one thousandth of a second f/8 ISO 500. All right, on to the next one. This is also an Amboseli. This is a greater flamingo, and. When flamingos come in for a landing, they kind of do this water walking scene as they're slowing back down. And this caught him kind of mid in that really cool landing sequence that flamingos do. Uh, so I was really happy to get a nice clean photo with the beautiful blue water and of course the pinks and the reds and everything, um, just lovely colors in this scene. And then the beautiful um, kind of pose caught him uh, mid landing with that cool water walking thing that the flamingos do. So, um, very happy with this one. This was with the Z9 and the 402.8 with the teleconverter engaged. So that's 560 millimeters at f4, ISO 500, 1 thousandth of a second. So there was a lot of light here, and I um, had a really fast shutter speed, and I was real careful not to blow out the highlights of the flamingos. So, the next image now, we are, we're still in Kenya. Uh, I believe, yeah, we are in Masai Mara now on this one. And this is a super cute little lion cub, little tiny baby with its mom. And this one was just looking for like cute little uh, moments of interaction between mom and baby. And this one was just really nice. I love the composition, the way the baby's kind of creeping in for some little mama snuggles and mama's leaning in. And um, you don't see her eyes in this one, which uh, I kind of is on purpose because it keeps the focus on the baby. But you can get the scale of how big mom is compared to baby, and you can see mom leaning in for some, some baby snuggles as well. So uh, just a super cute image with beautiful subjects. Uh, this was shot with the Nikon Z9 and the 500 millimeter PF lens, which I had to borrow from a client because my 400 millimeter lens decided to um, have an issue that didn't want to work for a while. So again, bring backups when you go on these big epic adventures. Uh, have a backup, and I actually did. I had the 100 to 400 with me, but a uh, client had this 500, and I wanted to punch in as tight as I could on this, so they let me borrow that, which was super nice. Thank you, David. You're the man. Uh, anyway, so one 500th of a second, F5.6 ISO 800 here. We are still in Masai Mara and more lions. And this was another moment of just really nice interaction between two lions. Uh, we had watched this pride go out on an unsuccessful hunt early in the morning. And when they finally gave up the hunt, they went back into the bushes to kind of settle down and rest for the day. And these two went and found a little spot, that's just beautiful spot in the trees and snuggled up for a minute and did some little loveys on each other before they laid down and went to bed for the day. So uh, just had a beautiful little moment of, you know, some affection between these two lions before they laid down for their daily nap. Uh, so caught that nice little moment in that beautiful environment with the lovely colors and Bang, it was great. This is the Nikon Z9 with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. One 160th of a second, f5.6 ISO 1800. All righty. Oh, hello. This might be my favorite photo of the year. Ah, I hate to say that. Um, I, have, I have a handful that could be the favorite. So every day it's a little different, but this this is one I think is just spectacular, and this is the kind of stuff I love doing, and I love it when I can pull off a shot like this. So this is a leopard. This is a leopard they call Luluka, and she's like my favorite leopard over there in Masai Mara. And uh, after I had an opportunity to photograph her for a while as she was moving through the bushes and hunting a little bit, 
And then um, after I got a bunch of kind of nice portraits and things, I decided to uh, try and work on some motion blur stuff, which is a low percentage game out there. But I uh, had some opportunities where she was moving along and I was able to try some slow shutter speed work. This particular one was shot at one sixth of a second, F10 ISO 64. And this was on the Nikon, the Z9 with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So that one sixth of a second, I'm panning along with her as best I can. And the motion blur through the legs is that sixth of a second. And then the background, of course, blurs out because my camera's moving and all that stuff just turns beautiful and simple and clean. And often I'm going for the eye. I want to be tack sharp. I want to capture that. This particular one I extra loved because what's the sharpest thing in the photo? It's that tooth and some of the whiskers. So it really draws your attention to the tooth and to the whiskers of this beautiful leopard. So I'm a big fan of this photo. I love it. One, it's my favorite leopard and two, it's a wonderful photo. So extra love on this one. All right, image number nine. We are back to some lions. Uh, and these are two lionesses. We had been watching one lioness and she was moving through the plains and we saw another lion you know, like a mile away. And they just kind of kept coming towards each other and eventually they came together and we didn't know what was gonna happen if they were friends or foes or whatever. But as they approached each other and then they kind of did this little uh, like greeting to each other where they walked up and snuggled and wrapped their tails around each other for this brief moment. Uh, it was obvious that they are um, family members and this was their greeting um, each other after being apart for the day or who knows how long they hadn't seen each other. But uh, this was just a super cool moment of symmetry with the, the two lions overlapping and then the, each of their tails wrapping around their heads. So really cool. Uh, I love this one, the symmetry and the just kind of the quirkiness of the composition here was great. So Nikon Z9 with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens at 1 320th of a second, f5.6 ISO 800. And I'm flirting with that 320th of a second. In hindsight on this one too, I probably should have gone to ISO 1600, which would have doubled my shutter speed. You know, this is still tack sharp, but uh, it would give me a little more margin for error if I was shooting at twice as fast as shutter speed. So um, if they were moving a little bit quicker or something, I would have had a more, uh, a higher probability of getting a tack sharp image. But this one was tack sharp, so no problem. But in hindsight, again, I would have done, uh, doubled the shutter speed there. If I could do it all over again, which I can't. And uh, so that was in Masai Mara. And this next image, we have moved to Samburu. And this is a white-throated bee eater. I'm pretty sure I remember that correctly. I think it's a white-throated bee eater. Anyway, it's doing what bee eaters do, and it's eating a bee. So super cool little moment here. It's a beautiful bird, lovely colors, interesting perch. Nice clean background. So everything is uh, really good here. And then the reason I selected this frame out of the others is because the perfect position of that bee, uh, you know, it had it in its beak and then it throws it up in the air and catches it and swallows it. So this was just that little fraction of a second where it's midair before it gets eaten and uh, worked out just beautiful. Great subject, great scene all together. And then that particular moment is the moment that mattered the most. And um, luckily I got it. So this is with the Z9 and that 500 millimeter PF lens, 1 2500th of a second F8 ISO 500. And so it was very bright and there's a lot of white parts on that bird and on the, the piece of wood itself. So uh, really high shutter speed there to make sure I don't overexpose those white parts. That would have been quite easy to do with that relatively darkish background. Okay, on to the next one. Now we're back to Masai Mara. Uh, 
two little lovebird giraffes. Two big lovebird giraffes, I should say. So they're doing a little snuggly action. They were doing some like um, mating ritual stuff out there. And this little snuggly moment, I loved it with both of their eyes closed, kind of leaning into each other. And then there's the third wheel down there, kind of lower left, a little ox pecker with his yellow and red bill down there, tagging along. Um, so between the giraffes and then the third wheel down there, it's a pretty cool image with some nice interaction. And just super clean and simple, you know, white background, just uh, kind of a white hazy sky in the background and super clean and just, just the way I like it. Nice and simple. Uh, let's see, Z9 with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, 1 1250th of a second, F5.6 ISO 500. And f5.6 is fine here. Everything's in the same plane. So I really don't need much depth of field here to get both of these uh, tack sharp. All right. Still in Masai Mara. Uh, what a scene. Cheetah on a termite mound at sunset. <laughs> it doesn't get much better. And a pretty easy shot to pull off. You know, once we found it, it was just a matter of maneuvering ourselves to get us in the right place to get the clouds the way we wanted them and to get the cheetah facing the direction, you know, facing us. And then the, the reason I pushed the shutter button on this particular frame is because of the tail position. And that's the reason I selected this image because there are times when this tail was just laying down and not visible. There are times when it was up, but in a different position. But I love this one, the way it curls back on itself. And that's the reason I choose this frame over the others that I took. But beautiful colors, simple, clean composition, but with interesting light, interesting background, interesting subject. It just works on every level for me. And, uh, so we're back on the Z9 with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, 1 320th of a second, F5.6 ISO 800. Okay, so I think I'm going to take a little break here in between images 12 and 13 uh, because this video is already getting kind of long-winded and I'll make another video for the second half. So keep an eye out for that second video and you'll get to see images 13 through 23 on that video. So thanks for watching this one and we'll see you soon on the next one. Let me know if you have any questions about these images or my processes or heck anything, future video ideas, whatever. Um, remember, you can always join me on my website, uh, sign up for these workshops, Africa, Yellowstone, Bull Moose, private one-on-one -on -one stuff in the Tetons year round. Um, all that stuff. Please use my B&H links when you can. Uh, when you're going to buy gear, they send me a couple of bucks when you buy things. And that really helps out, helps support the channel um, so I can keep making these videos and uh, just keep on going. So uh, appreciate it. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good one. See ya.